The market has been excruciatingly boring over the last week or so, even more than a week, up to 10 days. However, in 36 hours, we are seeing the first major event of the month occur. We have FOMC and we have CPI within 24 hours of each other occurring. These events lead to major volatility. We've seen it in the past. We'll check out the charts on that in a second. Uh, and we'll see it again continuing in the future. The fact that each one of these events by themselves, whether it be CPI or FOMC, leads to major volatility causing dramatic moves and shifts in the price action means that them happening together in the same 24 hour period is probably the explanation for the lack of volatility we've seen over the past week or so. The market is simply preparing, coiling up and waiting for those events to happen. And people and investors in the market, market participants are waiting to see the results of those events before they make any major financial decisions. Believe me when I say, the next 48 hours for Bitcoin, just over 48 hours, right? Almost three days. The next three days for Bitcoin will be huge in determining the macro structure, will be huge in determining where the bottom is, and will be huge for the short-term trades as well. Let's get into the video. So before we dive straight into the charts, go ahead and check out the links in the pinned comment. We've got the Crypto Academy courses where you can learn how to trade in a university course style format. We've got the VIP group, which you can take trading signals that I provide within the group. And then we've got the community discussion telegram group, which you can join free of charge to discuss the market with everyone else. Now that we've covered that, let's get into the video here. Starting out with the short-term charts, starting out with the four hourly chart, uh, uh, specifically the four hourly chart here, what we've basically done uh, ever since that FTX drop on November 10th, it's been a long time, it's been about a month, time flies here in the market, we haven't really done much of a since. We dropped down massively, came down to that region at 15.6K. Uh, we basically ranged around for a little bit, we did put in a lower low here at 15.4K, just slightly lower. I've discussed multiple times in the past, I'm not gonna go into it too much again, but I do think there is a decent chance that the bottom is in here at 15.4K. That's based on the four year cycle theory. That's also based on the amount of support we have in that region, which is surprising to many, but it actually is very considerable. One of the things we have in that region specifically is this uptrending line stemming from 2014 that we tested on that 15.4K retest and held quite confidently. On top of that, on the weekly chart and on the monthly chart, we have a horizontal support zone in that price region that stems all the way back from the rejection point in 2018, January. So we do have support here, right? Very important to note, we do have support here in this 16, 15K region, uh, and it's not just a random zone that we've picked out of the sky and just randomly decided to end up at, not at all. Um, so yeah, I do think there is a considerable chance that we have bottomed out here, but with that said, I don't think the short-term charts at this point in time look particularly compelling. If we're looking at the short-term charts and what actually is going on here for Bitcoin, what we can see is we had a triangular formation on the RSI stemming back from November 10th, which is the day we actually came down from the, F uh, from the FTX drop. That line was held support for a long period of time. We we saw a brief deviation, but ultimately it formed into a triangle formation. Ultimately, we've dropped it to the downside now. That break to the downside on the RSI lined up with a break to the downside of this dashed line, this uptrending line from the channel formation. Now we have found support on the secondary uh, channel formation line. And so right now, what we're actually in here is an ascending broadening wedge structure. Yes, it's messy. Yes, it's full of fake outs. And yes, it's probably best identified as just a support line rather than an ascending broadening wedge. But the point of the matter is that's a bearish structure, whichever way you flip it. Um, on top of all of this too, I, I hate to make it seem like, you know, going from bad to worse here, but it really doesn't look too confident in the short term. On top of all of this, uh, during this time, you know, ever since around November 22nd, since we started this small little uptrend we've got going here, the volume overall has been decreasing. You can see a clear decrease in volume over time, average volume for this entire move, which means that the higher we move here, which we are doing, we're putting in higher highs in the short term, the higher we go, the weaker the buying pressure. So I'm not particularly... Uh, you know, impressed at all uh, it, by any means by the shorter term charts here. I think the four hourly chart looks pretty abysmal by all standards. I don't think there's even, you know, a few good things to say about it. I think it's pretty much all bad, but it's more complicated than that. You know, I've been saying that for a few days. Uh, the reason why it's more complicated than that is because the reason we're here at this 16.9K level instead of 15K, it's not because of the, the just the TA, right? It's because people are waiting for these macro events 
which could dramatically shift the market. The market right now is waiting. It's on pause. It's on hold, right? It's waiting for these events. It's waiting to see what's going to happen with them. You know, we've got C, uh, you know, FOMC here in, in two, day, two days and 16 hours. We've got CPI coming through as well. Inflation topped out. Inflation's heading downwards further. By all market expectations, inflation has topped out. It's heading downwards. CPI, for example, uh, we're, we're expecting a 50 basis point hike here. Uh, and, you know, we've only ever seen 75 basis point hikes. So this would be the first 50 basis point hike, which does indicate a shift in the Federal Reserve's reaction to, to the uh, traditional market situation and the, the global um, and the, I suppose, what would you say? It's not not a recession by their standards, but it's certainly a recession. You know, it's it's a lessened reaction because remember, Federal Reserve they raise interest rates to calm inflation. Inflation is being calmed. We've seen that it's come down from what nine point six percent or something, what nine point two percent down to like seven point seven. It's being calmed already, so their reaction to it can be lesser now. So. There is justification for small moves to the upside like we've seen here. There is justifications for being at slightly elevated price levels leading up to these events because it doesn't look as bad as it did, say, a few months ago. Now, it certainly does still look bad, but the point is the market does not look at the, fu uh, the present. The market is kind of foreshadowing the future. So if it sees a light at the end of the tunnel, that's when the market bottoms out. The market doesn't bottom out when everything's good again. The market bottoms out when people think things are going to be good again in the future. They're trying to get in early. They're trying to predict it. That's the whole point of the market. You predict things before they happen. And so we see uh, time and time again over the course of the history of the financial markets, when we are in bad periods, when we are in recessions, when we do have high inflation, the markets bottom out before it looks good again. Very important to note because that does add to Bitcoin's argument. You know, it does add to the argument that Bitcoin could be bottomed out here or, or at least will bottom out soon. I want to briefly interrupt this video to talk about the BitGet exchange. The BitGet exchange has five times lower fees than Binance, which is the biggest major exchange in the cryptocurrency market on futures. It also has zero feeds on every single spot pair, so you can trade spot for entirely free, no fees included. It runs events. Right now, it's got a FIFA World Cup event sponsored by Messi, the football player. It's got copy trading, strategy trading. It's got exclusive rewards and discounts in the reward center. It's got everything you need for a trader using exchange. This is the exchange I personally use as a trader for my everyday trading, and I highly recommend it everyone does so at the Wolves of Crypto YouTube channel. Sign up using my referral link for exclusive rewards and discounts. That really helps out the channel and I appreciate it. For my fans from the United States of America, you can sign up using this exchange uh, with a VPN uh, and use the exchange with a VPN and just sign up using my referral link like normal and you'll be treated like a normal customer because this is also a non-KYC exchange. So make sure to sign up using my referral link in the pinned comment or the description below and without further ado, let's get back into the video. But ultimately, our plan isn't changing. Our plan's still the same, right? We've already kind of put our plan into action here. We bought, uh, I wonder where my text is. It's probably not here on this, this chart, but we bought 50%. We had a buying plan. We bought 50% at 17 to 18K. We plan to buy another 50% at either 13.8K to 11.5K, which would be a worst case scenario for Bitcoin in case we go lower, or we plan to buy the other 50%, which is still in reserves here, at the break of the bull market support band on the weekly chart, which would also be a break of this downtrending resistance line stemming from June and a break of the local downwards trend. So we're either buying the rest of the 50% at the trend reversal, or we're buying the rest of the 50% at a lower price that we deem to be the absolute bottom, right? So we're in a situation here, uh, and we've been in this situation for about a month now, where we can literally just sit back. It doesn't really matter doesn't really matter what happens to Bitcoin, as long as we're confident enough, which I, th I think a lot of people are, as long as we're confident enough to be like, okay, Bitcoin's going to survive long term, right? And Bitcoin's probably going to fall below the four-year cycle theory, what it's done uh, since 2012, you know, then we can sit back and say, it doesn't really matter exactly what happens in the short term. What matters is where we buy. And we buy at the trend reversal or we buy at the lower prices of 11.5K to 13.8K. I'd be very interested to see how this volatility over the next three days affects the Bitcoin chart. I will be. Because I tell you right now, the TA in the short term, the short term TA says we go down. So unless the inflation data comes in lower than expected and uh, potentially FOMC comes in lower than expected or at least comes in 50 basis points, I think inflation is the is the main kind of uh, mover here in the, in the short term because we're, everyone's already expecting a 50 basis point hike and it's unlikely they go 25. That would be um, quite... Ridiculous. So if we see a 50 basis point hike and lower than 7.7% .7 inflation, which is the expectation or 7.6, uh, then we will see a pump perhaps. But I think if things go to planned, if things go the way the market expects, right? If inflation comes in at the, the rate the market expects and FOMC comes in at the rate the market expects, 
I do think the negative TA will play out. I do think we'll see a breakdown here. I, I, I am hoping for, right? I think everyone is hoping for, um, you know, a break to the upside here, right? Because, you know, you can you can ask for lower prices all you want. And I'm sorry for not doing much analysis in this video. I'm just talking here. You can ask for lower prices all you want. And a lot of people do want lower prices. They want Bitcoin to go down so they can buy more. But it's very important that on the way down, we don't damage the, main, the, the major macro structures, right? It's very, very, very important for Bitcoin that it bottoms out in Q4 or maybe early January, right? We don't want to be going further than that. As soon as we go further, as soon as we start pushing into 2023 and we start bottoming out in March or April, all of a sudden that four-year cycle theory, which is a very strong trend that we can use to predict things very far in the future, is weakened. And all of a sudden the macro predictability is weakened for Bitcoin, which makes it less favorable for long-term investors, which ultimately weakens the entire cryptocurrency market. So people who say, oh, I, I wish Bitcoin would go down to 5K so I can buy more. It's like, no, 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 I don't think you understand. You don't want Bitcoin to go that low. There's only a certain uh, level Bitcoin can go to while still maintaining macro structure. I'll give you an example, right? If we go to the long-term chart, delete this for a second, we can see in previous bear markets, we dropped 86%, 86% uh, in this bear market in 2014. We dropped 84% in the bear market in 2018. Okay. And as of right now on Bitcoin, we have dropped roughly, let's go ahead and check, roughly 77%, okay? So we've seen diminishing returns to the upside, okay? Because each cycle we see less returns than we did in the previous ones. And we've seen slightly diminishing returns to the downside. Now, what would be bad for Bitcoin? I'll tell you what would be bad. If Bitcoin dropped more than 86% in this cycle, that would be bad because we would have seen diminishing returns to the upside, but not to the downside, which means Bitcoin is slowly leveling out and getting weaker and weaker over time. We want to be seeing less of a drop than we saw in 2014 and 2018 in this cycle, which is why a 77% drop, which we're at right now, would be perfect to bottom out at. If we go lower, if we go down 86% like we did in 2014, again, that would take us to uh, just below basically 9K or 10K, right? If we drop to 10K or 9K, what that shows is that Bitcoin is showing a massive amount of macro weakness. Yes, it's showing that even though we're having diminishing returns to the upside, we've also not got it to the downside. Macro weakness. We don't want that. That's an example. Another example, like I said before, if we bottom out in 2023, there's certain things we just don't want to happen for Bitcoin. And, and, and these are a couple of them. So at this point in time, I know I've rambled. I know the video has been a little bit messy. At this point in time, we're still waiting. Boring time in the market. There's a reason why I haven't been posting daily videos in the last week. There's nothing really to talk about. What I can say is this, short term short term's looking pretty ugly, but uh, in the next three days, we're having those major macro events uh, and we will be seeing volatility. That's finally gonna activate a lot of trades. We've got trading plans set up in the VIP group. A lot of people are waiting to trade uh, and yeah, we're just gonna be waiting for those events. Uh, I'll catch you tomorrow. Maybe we'll have some new price developments. It is worth noting that uh, you do see volatility ramp up before the macro events actually start. So I wouldn't be surprised uh, if in the next 24 hours, we start to see volatility really ramp up. Uh, and then continue all the way through until when those events are complete on the 15th. So thanks for watching, guys. Hope you enjoyed, uh, and I'll catch you in the next one.